evening. I'd like to call together the regular meeting of the York County School Board, May 23rd, 2016. Hope everybody is doing well. Just a couple of quick comments before we start this evening. First of all, I'd like to welcome our newest school board member, Mr. Todd Mathis. It's good to have him with us. And Mrs. Haywood is not here because her son was married and she <laughs> felt the need to be there. <laughs> so uh, she has not missed very many meetings in the 20 some odd years that she's been on this board. So uh, anyway, we're real happy for her. Okay, we're gonna start with our Pledge of Allegiance and I'd just like to read a few words about Owen Reeves. Owen, you wanna come on up? Let me read about you for a minute and then you can start, okay? All righty. Owen Reeves from Mount Vernon Elementary. Owen is a fourth grade student uh, and has been a Mount Vernon Mustang since he was in kindergarten. He is, he is a kind, responsible, and conscientious student. Owen is active in the Cub Scouts and has been a member of PAC 122 since first grade. He will soon be achieving the rank of Arrow of the Light. Owen is currently serving on our flag corps with other Cub Scouts. They are responsible for the daily raising and lowering of the state and the United States flag. He is diligent in his duties and shows great responsibility when checking with our school secretary regarding recent flag orders for posting the flag at half staff and weather forecasts so as not to have the flags posted in the rain. Outside of school, Owen is an active baseball player playing catcher on two teams the York County Little League Yankees, and the Renegades travel baseball team. He also enjoys playing soccer for his church soccer league. Owen participates in many community activities, including road cleanup crews, where he and fellow scouts pick up trash along the roadsides, and he helps gather food for the food pantry at Chestnut Memorial Methodist Church. While Owen has enjoyed fourth grade, he is excited about starting the fifth grade next year and the opportunity to be in the STEAM club, as Owen has aspirations of becoming an engineer. We are proud to have Owen represent us this evening and lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Stand, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you very much, John. Okay, this evening we're going to move right into our Seniors of the Month. And Ms. Kershke, I believe you have our first award. I do. It is my pleasure to announce the senior of the month of May from Bruton High School is Daniel Ellis Jones. Would you please stand with your family? <laughs> Bruton High School is proud to honor Daniel Jones as senior of the month for May. Daniel is a natural, charismatic leader and athlete. He is an athletic competitor who believes that in order to realize your true success, you must establish goals and work hard in order to achieve success. During Daniel's four years at Bruton, he has worked tremendously to refine his natural abilities and has been an asset to Bruton's football, basketball, and track programs. Daniel believes that the football program at Bruton has had the most impact on him because he has learned several lessons that will be important in life. This is also where Daniel has learned the importance of community and an extended family. Daniel is a very talented athlete and has participated in varsity football, track and field, and track and field for four years. He has also been a three-year starter for the boys' basketball team. This team won Conference 33 this year, and Daniel's leadership on the court was always a vital component. When Daniel is not preparing new athletic challenges for himself, he is reading. This is an academic area that he enjoys just as much as athletics. He has demonstrated leadership in the community by volunteering at his church to feed the needy. 
Daniel has accepted an offer to play football for the University of Richmond next season, and we wish him tremendous luck and congratulations. We are very proud of you. Okay, Mr. Mathis, we're going to break in right away here. Yes. <laughs> Also uh, for Bruton High School, uh, for April, uh, Joseph Morrow, and I believe your dad is here also. Would you please stand up. Oh, and, and mother, excuse me. <laughs> uh, Bruton High School proudly celebrates the magnificent accomplishments of Joseph Morrow. Joseph is a, a musically talented and athletic. He excels in any area where he takes an interest. Joseph is an outstanding musician who plays the alto, tenor, and sap, uh, soprano saxophones, as well as a snare drum. Obviously, he loves music. He is persistent in refining his musical talents and was selected as second chair alto saxophone player for the district symphonic band. In addition, he has been selected for district band every year since the sixth grade and has been selected for six honor bands. In 2015, uh, Joey was awarded a $3,000 scholarship from the Williamsburg Music Consort. He is a multi-sport athletic competitor in tennis, cross country, and swimming, and recently competed at the state level. As, a de as devoted as Joseph is to his extracurricular activities, he is also conscientious about academics and is currently earning a 4.24 GPA. He is also an Eagle Scout, and with this honor, Joseph holds the highest achievement rank attainable, attainable in the Boy Scouts of America. He serves our Bruton School and community well and is viewed as an excellent role model among his peers. When Joseph is not studying or practicing, he works as a lifeguard at the local YMCA. Congratulations, we're very proud of you. Ms. Kursky. Yes, it is my honor to announce the senior of the month of May from Grafton High School is Matthew Tripti. And Matthew, are you here? He's at a soccer game. Very busy young man. Well, we will read about him. For May, Grafton High School is honored to recognize Matthew Tripti as the Senior of the Month. Matthew is a member of the National Honor Society, Math Honor Society, and Spanish Honor Society. He also attends the New Horizons Governor's School for Science and Technology, where he is a member of the VCU programming team. For four years, Matthew has been a member of the GHS soccer team, Model UN, and the first team robotics club at the Governor's School. Matthew's awards and honors are impressive. He is a National Merit Scholarship finalist and recipient, Georgia Tech Presidential Scholarship semifinalist, <coughs> University of Virginia Rodham Scholar and Achievement Award recipient, and a Cornell University Presidential Research Scholar, and a John McCullen Dean Scholar. In his spare time, he enjoys playing ping pong, music, reading, programming, and cooking. Matthew is the valedictorian of the 2016 Grafton Senior Class and has earned a remarkable 4.84 GPA. He has narrowed his choices to attend either Cornell University, Carnegie Mellon, or Cal Berkeley in the fall. Please join me in congratulating Matthew Tripti. I have the next senior of the month from Tab High School, Alexander Joe. Alexander, and your mom is with you? Great. Alexander Joe is a terrific student who ranks first in his class with a GPA of 5.02. He has excelled in every academic area while completing 13 AP classes at Tab and the New Horizons Governor School curriculum for engineering. He is a National Merit Finalist and National AP Scholar. Last summer, Alex attended the Virginia Summer Residential Governor's School for Science and Technology, as well as Virginia Boys State. Alex is active in school, a member of nearly every honor society that exists. He is a member of several clubs, serving in leadership positions, and competes on the Scholastic Bowl team. Alex has also received great satisfaction from his work as the head coach of the Tab Middle School Math Counts team. A tireless worker, Alex has managed to make time to give back to the community through volunteer work with local hospitals and with the Boy Scouts. He is well known at Tab 
as an enthusiastic tutor who has patiently and thoroughly guided many students to success. <clears throat> Perhaps Alex's greatest quality is his likability. He is humble and treats everyone with respect. When he has, time, when he has no time to spare, Alex finds time for people. He is, he is an exemplary citizen. We are sure that he will continue to demonstrate those qualities at the University of Pennsylvania next year. We are deeply honored to present Alex Joe as the Tab High Senior of the Month. Congratulations, Alex. Mr. Medford. Thank you. It's York High School's turn. Um, the May Senior of the Month for York High is Madeline Honeg. Are you here? All right, and mom's with you. Perfect. York High School is pleased to announce the selection of Madeline as a senior, April Senior of the Month, actually May Senior of the Month. Uh, three words that would describe Madeline is enthusiastic, creative, and thoughtful. Madeline is passionate about her academics, and it shows in the selection of her courses and her impressive grade point average. Madeline plans to get her degree in advertising and psychology and hopes to live in the Netherlands one day. Madeline is very involved at York High School. She is a member of the National Honor Society, Thespian Honor Society, Spanish Honor Society, and Mu Alpha Theta. Madeline is also a member of the Creative Writing Club, the Future Business Leaders of America, Student Council Association, Model United Nations, and Madeline attends the School of the Arts at Bruton High School. While being in the School of the Arts, Madeline has helped to direct showcases and has assisted teachers and students with planning performances. Madeline has won first place in photography at York High School Art Show, the hardest working female award for Marl Bank Mud Toad swim team, and second place in the business communications at the Future Business Leaders of America Regional Conference. Madeline's passion is dance. She has been a dancer for 11 years and is currently involved with the Virginia Regional Ballet where she has danced in their adaptation of the Nutcracker for six years. Madeline also volunteers in her community. We still have time. She has organized and planned Cookies for Kids, a cancer bake sale which raises money for pediatric cancer research. And she has served as a camp counselor for 4-H camp programs. Madeline works as a lifeguard for Marl Bank Recreation during the summer months. You stay busy. York High School is so proud of you and your accomplishments. Congratulations. Mr. Medford, we'll yes, it's again. York River Academy. Um, Carter Rose, and I'm, you can stand your family, I believe mom, dad, and everyone's with you. Good. <laughs> Carter is the choice as the York River Academy Senior of the Year. Carter's recognition is more of a culmination of his high school career than a list of accomplishments. Carter has sh shown to staff, students, and family that a successful school career as not only a transcript, but it includes a record of activity, service, and issues of character and heart. Carter certainly has exceeded his own expectations in terms of academics, accomplishing a very respectful GPA and hitting all the other marks required. Carter has obtained industry certifications in the workplace readiness skills for the Commonwealth, WISE Financial Literacy, and Microsoft Office Specialist in PowerPoint. Carter has shown himself to be so much more than those things that can be quantified. Carter serves as the president of our key club, the primary service organizations at YRA, and has spearheaded all of the service done through that group of students, leading by example and not being hesitant to call others to account in the hopes of inspiring and encouraging their production. He has been the spearhead of a new project at YRA of producing a bi-weekly newsletter that are distributed to the community. Carter is our go-to guy for just about anything we need to have happen. Need recycling done? Carter. Need the rooms arranged for a parent partnership meeting? Carter. Need help in a classroom? Carter. Need someone to work with younger students and help them transition to the school? Carter. In fact, a struggling freshman told the school administration that he wishes all the other older kids were like Carter, friendly, helpful, and willing to even talk to a freshman. Carter is actively involved in his church and has volunteered and worked at Colonial Williamsburg for many years in a variety of settings. 
Carter is a young man of integrity, willing to own mistakes if made and work through to viable, viable solutions. He is remarkable, remarkably polite and gracious in conversation, attentive to the needs of others, and willing to do just about anything to serve. Every so often, a student comes along who provides so many things, large and small, to the school as a whole. Carter is just that sort of young man, and he will be greatly missed by everyone at YRA. We are confident that Carter will succeed in whatever he puts his hands to and will continue a life of service, support, and achievement. Carter, we're very proud of you. YRA is very proud of you. Keep up the good work. Congratulations. And our final senior of the month this evening is also from Tab High School, Leah Tyson. Hello, Leah. Hi. Got your mom? Yes. All righty. Leah Tyson is an outstanding student and represents Tab High School as captain of the varsity soccer team. She has maintained a 3.87 GPA while playing soccer nearly full time. Last year, Leah was named Conference 19 Player of the Year, First Team All Region, and First Team All State. She is off to a successful start this year, recently having been named Most Valuable Player of the Garvey Tournament. Leah is also captain of the Richmond Strikers United, her travel team, which involves a three-hour round trip several times each week to participate. Next year, Leah will be attending the University of South Carolina Upstate with a soccer scholarship. Leah is a member of the National Honor Society and Spanish Honor Society. She has achieved highest honors each year since ninth grade. Outside of school, Leah has volunteered through her church to feed the homeless and has tutored students in reading and writing. It can be honestly said of Leah that she knows no strangers. Her engaging personality, constant smile, and acceptance of all people have made her a beacon of goodwill at Tab High School. She exudes warmth. We are extremely proud to present Leah as the Tab High School Senior of the Month. Congratulations, Leah. Okay, at this time we're gonna move into our Student Service Awards. Dr. is gonna come on down front. And the first student service award is for Emma Lugo. Emma, would you come up with the principal of Mount Vernon Elementary, please? <laughs> Emma Lugo has been selected as our student service award winner based on her service to our school and community. This year, Emma served as the Mount Vernon Student Council President and previously served as the Vice President in fourth grade. She has worked with students and staff in leading Mount Vernon through several community service projects, such as canned food drives, raising awareness and money for the Leukemia and Lymphoma Society, and collecting pet food for the SPCA. Emma is a member of several school groups, such as Chorus, Festival Chorus, Odyssey of the Mind Team, and various after-school clubs. Emma is a, is a member of the youth-led community service organization, Kids United to Help, as well as an active participant in activities to support the Victory Family YMCA and the, and the Natasha House. She will also be volunteering her time with the York County Parks and Rec Safety Town program this summer. In addition to community service, Emma swims for her neighborhood swim team, is a sideline and competition cheerleader for the Grafton Tab Youth Football, and plays lacrosse for the Yorktown Titans. While reflecting on her years at Mount Vernon, she said the best part was being a peer mentor to students with special needs. Emma attended the IPOP program at three and four years old, and serving as a peer mentor has never been far from her mind. Teachers have commented that she is a friend to many students and doesn't hesitate to make sure that all students, regardless of ability, are included. Emma, congratulations. You make us very proud. <laughs> Mr. Mathis. Uh, next we have from Tab, Tab High School, Sarah Lewis and Principal Angela Siders. Please come up.
Sarah's. Sarah? She's Bueller? <laughs> yeah. Sarah is not able to be with us this evening. So. Uh, we'll go ahead and read it anyways. <laughs> Sarah Lewis is one of the most service oriented students at Tab High School. She contributes to her school in a huge way, serving as the SCA Executive Board President. She is the chapter and district president for DECA and has participated at the state and national level. Sarah is an officer in several other organizations and serves as vice president for the debate, where she has also completed successfully at state. Outside of school, Sarah is a member of the Civil Air Patrol and is working towards her private pilot license. She has contributed hundreds of hours of community service through the Girl Scouts of America, the Key Club, and the Chesapeake Bay Foundation, among others. She has tutored, fed the hungry, and farmed oysters. Sarah is willing to step in wherever there is a need. Every once in a while, there seems to be that one student who is always present and steps in to fill every gap. Sarah is that student at Tab High School. Without her, our school and community would be lacking. She has made a big difference during her four years in high school, and we appreciate every one of her many hours that she has contributed over the years. It is our distinct pleasure to name Sarah Lewis as the Student Service Award winner at Tab High School. She's probably flying right now, earning some hours to get her private yeah, license. Probably. I'll give her that. Okay, we're going to move into the Community Volunteers of the Month. And I have the first one, uh, Mr. Steve Sears. If we could have Steve Sears and the principal from Mount Vernon Elementary, please come up. I don't think Mr. Sears knew what was going on until he, until just now, actually. <laughs> Mount Vernon Elementary is proud to have Mr. Steve Sears represent us as the May Volunteer of the Month. Mr. Sears has been a parent at Mount Vernon for many years, having all nine, yes nine, of his children come through the York County School Division. He has been an active participant in a variety of activities over the years, but this year he stepped into the, in to fill a need and give assistance to our school without, without having been asked to do so. At the beginning of the year, Mr. Sears noticed that our parent drop-off line was quite long and the little ones getting out of the cars needed extra assistance. One day he parked his car, joined our paraeducators in line, and started opening car doors and helping students across the street. After a few days, he came to check on volunteering on a regular basis for morning arrival. Soon he was signing in as a visitor every morning to help with our students' arrival. When asked why he wanted to help, he replied, well, I don't have to be at work until nine, so I have plenty of time to help. Throughout the school year, in rain, ice, and snow, he greeted our children and their parents with a smile and worked with the paraeducators to create safer procedures for their arrival. Mr. Sears is also a valuable member of his church community, often volunteering his time at Catalyst Church. It is not unusual for him to jump in to assist when older citizens need their lawn mowed, Odd, job, odd jobs completed, or even a ride to church. He truly embodies the word volunteer, and he makes a difference in our community daily. Thank you so much, Mr. Sears, for all you did. <laughs> okay, and Mr. Mathis. Uh, from Tab High School, uh, Volunteer of the Month Award to Mrs. Elizabeth Glass. And Principal Ms. Snyder, please come up again. Mrs. Glass here. She's no, she's not the she, she's the fashion show, like t-shirts. <laughs> sure she's not flying with Sarah again? <laughs> uh, we are very fortunate at Tab High School to have a very active and involved community. Our parents are supportive and help make our school an excellent environment for all. One parent in particular has been a shining light at TAB this year. Mrs. Elizabeth Glass has demonstrated her dedication to our school and its people unfailingly. If there is ever a need for an extra set of hands or support for our teachers and staff members, she is there. As our hospitality representative for the PTSA this year, she has exhibited great care and kindness to our teachers. Before the school year even started, she created pencil holders with the TAB logo on them for all of our leadership team members. She helped us start our year off right by 
taking our vision of a Hollywood theme and making it a reality with a photo booth, decorations throughout the building, and centerpieces for each table in the cafeteria. Her creativity is unbounded. Mrs. Glass ensured that teachers continue to feel appreciated throughout the year by providing luncheons themed around the holidays. She even enlisted the help of her son and his friends to dress in costumes and hand out gifts. <laughs> her thoughtfulness can be evidenced in the miniature cakes each teacher receives on his or her birthday. Personally, she has also provided candy and popcorn bars during the course of the year and goodies to different department heads. The junior class has also benefited greatly from our, her devotion to our school. She enlisted the help of several students to create a Paris-themed junior class ring dance. Students were transported to a Parisian night. Each child received a hand-imprinted glass to commemorate the evening. Unfortunately, the event had coincided with a real-life tragedy in Paris. She was also able to provide students with a replica of the Pont de Bridge art, uh, uh, Arts Bridge in Paris where they could share their support and condolences through a lock. Much like her commitment to our staff members, Ms. Glass encouraged the, and supported the junior class representatives as they fundraised and held events. Irma Bombeck may have st best stated our appreciation of volunteers. Volunteers are the only human beings on the face of the earth who reflect this nation's compassion, unselfish caring, patience, and just plain loving one another. Mrs. Glass exemplifies these qualities. For this and many other reasons, we would like to nominate her for the York County School Division's Volunteer of the Year. Ms. Kursky, I'm gonna turn it over to you at this point. Yes, I would like to invite York Foundation for Public Education board member, Mr. Gary Sager to the stage. Is, oh. We've got the president of the York Foundation for Public Education, Mr. Jim Noel, to come forward. We would also like our students, Owen and Emma, to come to the stage, along with our students of the month, Daniel, Alexander, Madeline, Carter, Leah, and Joseph. If our students of the month would come to the stage. Con congratulations to Owen Reeves, a fourth grader at Mount Vernon, for reciting the Pledge of Allegiance tonight. And we want to recognize tonight's Student Service Award recipient, Emma Lugo from Mount Vernon Elementary School. And congratulations to our Seniors of the Month for May, Daniel Jones from Bruton, Alexander Zoe from Tab, Madeline Honig from York, Carter and Carter Rose from the York River Academy. And congratulations to our Seniors of the Month for April, Leah Tyson from Tab, and Joseph Morrow from Bruton High School. Special gifts from Cookie Text and Edible Tweet are being presented on behalf of the York Foundation for Public Education in partnership with its donor, Jeannie Fioka, of Cookie Text and Edible Tweet. Let's give all of these outstanding students a round of applause. We are so proud of them. Thank you all. We got a bunch of paparazzi out there, so you guys can come forward. That's all right. <laughs> Ms. Kirsch, you have our next award. Yes, the Virginia School Boards Association held a student art show on April 12th at the 2016 Tidewater Region Spring Forum. The forum was held at Kellum High School and included 16 school divisions. Each division was asked to submit three pieces of art from elementary, middle, and high school levels. 
We are excited to congratulate the second place winner for the Tidewater area comes from the York County School Division, Ashraf Abdul Aleem. Ashraf, are you here tonight? No, we thought there might be a chance that he could not make it, but he is a junior at Grafton High School, a very talented student. And yes, the assistant principal, Karen Faringer, will accept the award. We are so proud of him. You can see his artwork. Very talented junior at Grafton High School, second place winner for the Tidewater area at the VSBA Art Show. Congratulations. Ms. Kirsch, you just continue on. Okay. Local businesses have the power to shape community attitudes about public schools. And every spring, the Virginia School Boards Association provides a way for local school divisions to recognize businesses for their support, especially as schools face increasing budget uncertainty. The business honor roll helps us say thank you. And tonight, the York County School Board would like to thank and recognize three businesses for being named to the VSB, VSBA Business Honor Roll. We have Jim Noel of the York Foundation for Public Education. We would also like to ask Belinda Willis to come forward and help with these presentations. And as I announce the recipient's name, if you would come forward. John and Tricia Biagas of Bay Electric Company. The Biagas family is the recipient of a VSBA Business Honor Roll Award for their continued partnership with the York Foundation for Public Education via the endowed Bay Electric Company Technology Initiative of $100,000. They have also sponsored the foundation's annual golf tournament and Tricia serves as a foundation board member. We congratulate you and thank you so very much for your commitment to the students, staff, and employees of the York County School Division. Next, Brian Skinner and Sandra Allen of Town Bank. We want to congratulate and thank Ms. Allen of Town Bank for continued partnership with the York Foundation for Public Education via the endowed Town Bank Teacher of the Year Fund of $25,000, as well as Sandra's participation participation as a York Foundation board member. Thank you so very much. And finally, we have Bobby and Kelly Ash of Ash Facility Services. They're unable to be here, but we want to recognize the Ash family for being named on the VSBA Business Honor Roll and recognize their continued partnership with the York Foundation for Public Education via financial support through their contribution of $50,000 for the Fund for Excellence campaign, as well as Kelly's participation as a foundation board member. Thank you all so much for making a huge difference in the lives of our students and staff. Thank you. Okay, at this time we're going to turn to Dr. Shander and you're going to share some information on our William & Mary cohort. Thank you, Dr. George, board members. Good evening, everyone. I'm going to ask <clears throat> Chief Human Resource Officer Dr. Jim Carroll to please come to the podium. He's going to share some information with you this evening regarding um, the William & Mary cohort as well as introduce some of our newest members. Dr. Carroll. Thank you, Dr. Shandor. Chairman George, members of the board. Every two years, the School of Education at William & Mary admits participants recommended from CERN member school divisions like ours for an administrator endorsement program in educational leadership. The program blends elements of well-grounded theoretical perspectives with innovative practices in the preparation of educational leaders. The administration and supervision pre-K through 12 program 
emphasizes skills needed for entry-level leadership positions. This degree leads to endorsement by the Virginia Department of Education, and students who currently hold a master's degree can opt for a second degree or continue after the endorsement courses to earn a doctoral degree. Admitted cohort members received a scholarship from William & Mary to a, uh, for an amount that equals about 25% of their tuition. These individuals being recognized tonight have completed their classroom work and will serve internship experiences with us this summer and uh, to complete the program. So I'd like to recognize those individuals and if you'll please stand when I name you. First, Heather Barton, a third grade teacher with Waller Mill Elementary School. <laughs> Jamie Beckner is an art teacher at Mount Vernon Elementary. <laughs> Jeff Gaylord is a teacher at Tab Middle School. <laughs> Nadine Hallman is an assessment and compliance coordinator at York High. Heather Long is a second grade teacher at Seaford. The last member of the cohort is Kristen Wood. She's an online learning specialist at the school board office. She couldn't join us tonight. So I just wanted to thank you for your hard work and please join me in congratulating them. Thank you. Hey, Dr. Shander, I believe you have some comments on Accent on Academics this evening? Absolutely. I'm going to introduce our team from Grafton High School. The Spanish four classes at Grafton High School collaborated with virtual Spanish three classes to create resources for Spanish speakers visiting the Virginia Living Museum. To share more about this presentation and introduce the students and other presenters is Ms. Karen Farringer, Grafton High School Assistant Principal. I could ask you to come forward. I'd like to introduce Ms. Josie Sevilla, who is the teacher of the Spanish classes, and she's going to take over. <laughs> okay, um, do I pull this up? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, I'm here to talk about a project that we did with the Virginia Living Museum last year, and we called it Operation Get Spanished. Um, we were providing, <laughs> our, our entire goal was to provide materials for Spanish speakers in the community. Um, ultimately, in all, these are the things that we provided. We provided video overviews of the different galleries. Um, thanks to a grant from the York Foundation for Public Education, we also got some audio players where we put the audio portion of the videos on the players so that people visiting the museum can listen to audio overviews as they go through the different galleries. Um, we also provided bilingual resource materials for children using the students' original art. Um, there is now a guided overview of the boardwalk when you go through it describing all of the animals that you're going to encounter along the way um, in Spanish. And we also provided a Spanish version of the museum map. Um, I want to say that when, as soon as I, I started, as soon as I started the project, um, my objective was to try and find out exactly what the museum needed. I didn't want to provide materials that they would be grateful for, but not necessarily something that they needed. So I started the entire thing with um, a visit from someone from the museum who came out and spoke to the students and told them, this is what we need. And then the students planned it out. I also involved our online classes. I, I teach Spanish online for virtual high school. And I involved them. They did portions of it as well. And here to explain what the Spanish four classes did is Elizabeth. 
Hi. Um, so in my class, we um, did the actual um, audio files for the audio players, as well as like a video that had some pictures with um, what we were talking about. So um, the first step, obviously, was we divided into groups and we tackled which area we were um, going to talk about. And um, then we did a lot of background research on specifically what <coughs> was in our exhibit. Sorry, I keep forgetting that word. <laughs> Um, so after that, um, Miss Avia was really nice. Like she said, she had the lady come in and she told us all about like what the museum needed. And then we took a trip to the museum itself and we got to take a ton of pictures and learn all about our specific exhibit. And then we went back, we wrote a script, Miss Avia proofread it, so we made sure everything was grammatically correct and something someone would actually understand. Um, and yeah, I mean, we, we put it all together. It sounded great. I was really proud of it. It was pretty cool. I don't like Spanish, and I still thought it was pretty cool, but. <laughs> and um, <laughs> Mira here was in the Spanish four classes as well, but her group did something a little bit different. She had the children's area, and being that that was her area, they did something a little special. So I've, she's here to explain what she did. Yeah, so like Professor mentioned, my group did the audio for the Wild and Well part of the museum, which is like the children's play area. And we also made these little bilingual pages, like activities for the kids. And the first obstacle we had with that was the fact that we couldn't use any copyrighted materials, so we actually ended up creating all of our own graphics. You can see on the PowerPoint there, like I actually drew the pictures, for example, and we made that work out with what we had. And the whole idea behind the bilingual activities is that we have English and Spanish for all of the text on all of the pages. That way, if there is a Hispanic child that wants to play with this, they'll see that it's something that they can understand. And they'll also see the English next to it to help them learn the language. And if there's an American child that sees this, they see, wow, there's this cool second language on the page. Maybe they want to learn more about it. Maybe they want to learn more about Spanish culture. And for me, like that's the coolest thing about this whole project. It's something that we as high schoolers actually did that is actually applicable in the real world. And people are using this, and we actually managed to make something useful. <laughs> yeah. um, and this next slide that I have is a, an example of the museum map. This was done by the Spanish three online classes. Um, what they had to do was, it, it, it's not as simple as just translating the map. They had to do a portion at a time um, throughout the entire year. And then at the end, they also had to compare with one another and decide what translations of the different areas are the best. And they had to listen to all of the audio recordings from the Spanish 4 class and make sure that they were being consistent with the vocabulary that was being used between both. Um, so that was really important. The, the two classes had to work together, the Spanish class in the traditional classroom and the online class, they had to interact somewhat um, in order to make this successful. And this shows you the final map, and you'll see where it has audio numbers. As you're going through the museum looking at the map, you can turn to that audio file on the players. Right there. <laughs> you can turn to that file on the players and listen to an explanation of the gallery. Um, and finally, I also thought I would uh, include you know, where you can find this information. Um, this is a screenshot of the Virginia Living Museum webpage. If you pull up um, visit the museum and you go to the special needs section, it explains exactly what, it, what we did there. It says, you know, classes at Grafton High School um, ser secured MP3 players through a grant. And, and it explains everything that we did. You can see pictures of it. And they have all of the audio files are right there online. So they're accessible from home as well. And I also included an article that the um, Spanish department of the Washington Post, they came in and did the tour. And um, they did an article on that and posted it. And just as a former Spanish teacher myself, I was really excited about this when Ms. Sevilla presented the idea. So we've just been very proud of the work our students have done um, for the community. And um, even within the school, they had to work on a lot of things that they don't normally get exposed to in a Spanish class. So we just want to thank them for all their hard work and Ms. Sevilla for coming up with the idea. <laughs> Thank you.
asking the question. I just got, yeah, I got a couple questions. Yeah, um, questions, questions. Did, um, yeah I, I was told that you might have questions. I, well, first of all, the, the Virginia Living Museum has um, been around a long time. Has anyone ever done a project like this for them before? No. Okay, that's pretty awesome. Um, I'm sure others will maybe follow in the footsteps now. Um, I loved your honesty. Spanish was something. To, um, you're in Spanish four. Um, and, but to hear you say that, you know, for whatever reason, Spanish is not one of your favorites, but to hear you say you had a cool time and you really enjoyed it, that means a lot as a school board member because they brought something to life that triggered something, an excitement for you, and that's what public education is all about. So even though you may have a subject that's not your favorite, but you found a way, or your teacher and your classmates found a way to make it come to life for you. So good job to all of you. I, I cannot say how excited I am about this project. I just think it is so awesome. Um, wow, Mrs. Sevilla, w job well done. You've really taken instruction out of the classroom and provided a service for the community and really enriched the lives of these students and, and given them um, a, a different aspect of typical Spanish class. This is awesome. I'm so proud of you all for doing this, and thank you, York Foundation for Public Education, for making the grant possible so you could all do this. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. All right, at this time, the board's going to take a short recess so we can come down and meet our um, award recipients this evening. This evening on their unfinished business, we have none. Anyone? And we'll move on into presentations. Uh, Dr. Shander? Thank you, Dr. George, board members. I'm going to ask Mr. Shearhart, Associate Director for Capital Plans, to come to the podium to provide this month's construction report. Mr. Shearhart? Mr. Chairman, members of the board, and Dr. Shandor, here's your capital projects report for the month of May. I'd like to talk, focus on three projects this, this evening. The first of these is Walla Mill, the additions and renovations at this school. Been very busy this last month, despite all the rain, a lot of things got done. The, uh, in the classroom wing, the contractors have been installing the brick along the outside walls and also insert, uh, inserting the window in, windows into the building. The uh, gymnasium wing, they actually have the roof, they actually put the roof on it over, the spray, over this time between rain showers. They've uh, started the brick on the gymnasium wing, and they've also inserted the windows in the lower section, front section of the gymnasium wing. In the offices and library area, they've had the partial footers there, and they've put in some underground plumbing and some electrical work there, but that's about all that's happening in the front right now. So this first picture here was one I shared with you uh, about a month ago at the last, last report, just to show you the insulation that's sprayed around the outside of the building before they put the bricks on, and this is what it looks like now. So there's a big difference there. You can see the windows installed and the bricks there. This is what one side of the classroom wing looks like. If you look at all the mud there, when you go around the corner, it gets very, very deep, and they couldn't get the, couldn't get the bricks around the opposite side, so the opposite side is not done yet. I also showed you this picture last month, too, in the last report. This is the, uh, the art and classroom here at the front in the foreground and the gymnasium in the back. And this is, again, showing the, how they put the uh, spray foam on there. And this is what it looks like now. So they've been very busy trying to get the brick on, the windows in. And you can see the spray foam is all up on the back on the gym building. I also showed you this picture last month. And uh, here you have them installing the steel uh, metal decking on the roof of the gymnasium. And this is what it looks like now. All the metal decking is install decking is installed. And they've all started installing the HVAC ductwork in the gymnasium. This last picture here is the roof of the gym. Uh, the, so the roof of the gym is on. The roof of the gym, uh, roof of the classroom wing is on. They just haven't been able to put the roof in the front of the gymnasium over the art and music classrooms because the brick masons are right there building the front wall of the, uh, of the gymnasium. Uh, before I leave this slide, this is my last slide for Walla Mill. I'll explain a little bit about Walla Mill coming back and the returning in the fall. This, if you look at the front of the building, there's a left wing on the building and then the right wing and then the, the classroom wing, wing we've put on the back. The left wing of the class, less, excuse me, the left wing of the building, the students will not be in that left wing 
when the students return in the fall. They'll be on the right-hand side and in the new classroom wing in the back. So we're moving the children, moving the classrooms out of those wings into the new areas until that portion of the building is done. There's so much work being done in the existing building, there's just not enough time to do it in eight weeks in their summer. So they're having to stretch that into the, into, the, uh, into the fall. So that's why we broke that school into two phases for the renovation of the existing building. So then the next two projects I'd like to touch on are Bethel Manor and Yorktown Elementary Schools. Bethel Manor is the three and 400 hall renovations and the Yorktown is the HVAC replacement and partial roof replacement and also the expansion in the front of the building. This includes the expansion of the cafeteria, rotating the main offices so they face the main entrance and also building a security vestibule at the front of the building. So those projects are, are, well, are going along well. The, Architects and engineers are continuing to work in the design work for those projects, and they are due to have the plans and specifications to me on August 1st of this year. Now, this, these two projects will not take place until summer of next year since the plans and specifications are, are not completed at this point in time or won't be completed in time for this, this year's, this summer. And that's my last slide for this evening. Do you have any questions for me? Do no. Not. It's right. nice to see all the pictures of the work that's been done at Waller Mail. It's a long time coming. <coughs> yeah, I'd be glad to get it done. <laughs> thank, thank you, Mark. Thank you, Mr. Sharp. At this time, Mr. Sam Urey will share a brief comments pertaining to the YEA survey results. Good evening, Cam Chairman George, Dr. Shandor, and other members of the school board. I'm Sam Urey, 302 Penrith Crossing, president of the York Education Association. The York Education Association has been conducting these surveys for years. At one time, we operated in a fearful climate. That climate negatively impacted on the school board office, the schools, its teachers, and our students. I do not believe we operate that way now. The last survey we shared results with you was last September. That survey was conducted right at the end of school. Um, this time we conducted the survey earlier. It's reflective of a new, hopefully better climate. There's always room for improvement. We truly have the potential to make a lot of things better. Uh, this survey was, used, <coughs> was conducted using more questions, more open-ended questions, and it, it's that level of detail that we're working on to give you a more complete packet. So this is just kind of a summary with some comments. Um, similar to last year, the top priority is guaranteed uh, annual step movement on the salary scale. It's the high or highest for about 94% of the respondents. It's imperative for the seed to be planted now to consider a total recouping of the steps. It is the difficult thing to do, but it's the right thing to do. We're losing the best county teacher candidates because they are refusing to take a significant pay cut. Since we're data-driven, capture exactly how many of these hires are turning us down over pay. It's frustrating for our current employees to watch their purchasing power and <coughs> spending money being drastically reduced. We, the educators, have, have met increasingly demanding standards, increasingly difficult students, a terrifyingly toxic testing environment, which is not all, not your blame, but just the environment that we're operating in, and increasingly demanding parents. We, the educators, have increased our transparency. We've increased our accountability in every way, but the York County School Division and based on the Board of Supervisors not been able to properly compensate the employees by your own standards. If the, pro if the proper figure is $3 million, then let's start planning for the pieces to implement that increase. Again, it's the right thing to do. It takes courage and perseverance to accomplish this. We are courageously making that statement right now. The cuts imposed by the Board of Supervisors are deliberate in their attempt to ensure that we do not recoup the steps we were denied. Every county employee, every school employee needs to have their steps recouped, period. We need to stop making fiscal excuses with, moral, uh, with morale being destroyed in terms of it, the impact. We want to recruit, retain, and empower the best. The best not by test, it is by relationship building, and that relationship starts with the Board of Supervisors, the school board, and its teachers. That being said, the same cannot be said about the school divisions, paraeducators, school administrators, bus drivers, custodians, and nurses. 
We're one, we are one team, one mission, York County School Division, YCSD. Our commitment to salary should be across the board in every employee category. It is currently not. Specifically, our school nurses, using the best example, are the bottom in the area and not by a little. School nurses' responsibilities are truly daunting. It's an area that requires quite a bit of attention. The area that needs even more attention is the ensuring of professional treatment for all employees. That is not happening. Our detailed survey results, which are forthcoming, reflect exactly that. The lack of evaluations, the absence of fairness, the muting of their voices, and the retaliatory environment some of our people are working must be corrected. We cannot fix what many will not acknowledge is broken. Custodians, bus drivers, and paraeducators, please talk to them. More importantly, listen to them. Our employees, for the most part, are dedicated and selfless in their day-to-day -day operations. As such, we need to listen to them. We need to protect them. We need, and many times, placing them in very untenable situations. We look forward to continuing to work with you in the future. We will continue to our effort to keep the school division informed on our results of various things and to continue in our efforts to, be, to make York County School Division the best that we can. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And we do appreciate the time that you, you put into this and valuable feedback. Okay, this evening we have two opportunities for which um, the public can speak before us. The first is a public hearing on the proposed school board salaries for FY17. Um, so specifically for the school board salaries for FY17, I open the, the public hearing now. Is there anybody that wishes to speak on the school board salaries? Seeing none, I close the public hearing. And at this time, we'll move into our public participation, participation at board meetings. Uh, we do have an, a number of people signed up to speak this evening. Once again, I'll remind you, please, please limit it to three minutes and state your name and address when you come up. Okay, Joy Cipriano. Good evening. My name is Joy Cipriano, and I live at 605 East Woodland Drive, Yorktown, District 4. And I come before you, as I have, ever since Steve Staples was York County Superintendent. Yes, for over a decade, I have advocated for York County Schools to move start times for our high school and middle school students. For over a decade, we in the PTA have provided you report after report on the positive impact of later school start times. For over a decade, science has added to the mountain of data on improved performance, reductions in substance abuse, reductions in behavior problems, reductions in car crashes, and improvements in grades and test scores. Hopefully making the learning environment more positive for the teachers as well as the students. For over a decade, we've been told we need to study this. It's complicated, or it will impact working parents, or sports, or jobs. Well, guess what? The current school system has always impacted working parents because it fails to recognize that the majority of parents, moms and dads, work outside the home. But that's another discussion. Back in the dark ages, when school start times were normally 8 or 8.30, we still had buses to run. We even had sports and clubs and part-time jobs. And amazing how we could do that. We didn't even have computers, imagine that. And what if we told our students they had a decade to study for their SOLs? Where would they be? After 10 years, they'd still be stuck in elementary school. Well, it's too late for my children. By the time you get done studying this, they'll likely have children of their own. So my presence here isn't just to remind you that there has been enough studying it's time to do something. It's also to send a message that this is so overwhelmingly important to the success of all York County students and the children that all of us parents have, that I'll keep coming back and I'll keep coming back 
in order that other people's children are going to have a better school environment than mine did. And I will keep coming back. In STEM, we're always talking about STEM, but if the leadership of your county schools cannot use science and technology to make effective decisions to help all of our students, then I respectfully ask, how can we ask our students to use STEM at all? Thank you. Thank you. Delphia Hedgepath. Good evening, Dr. Shandor, Dr. George, members of the school board. My name is Delphia Rawls Hedgepath of 202 Yorkview Road, Yorktown, Virginia. I included my maiden name, Rawls, to commemorate the fact that I have just this past weekend celebrated the 65th anniversary of my graduation from Robertsonville High School, class of 1951, when my name was Delphia Tyson Rawls. There were only 37 in my class, but we received a quality education from superb and dedicated teachers in a public high school in North Carolina that enabled all of us to become successful in life. <clears throat> and that is the primary purpose of a public school education. Amen? Amen? But my main purpose tonight is to urge you in your capacity to help the students in the York County School Division achieve success and reach their potential by resuming the traditional start times for school next year. Next year, allow them to get a good night's sleep and arrive at school rested and motivated. The science is clear on this issue and now it's up to you to make it happen. My second request tonight has to do with the shirt I'm wearing. You can tell that I'm a supporter of the drama department at York High School. But my reason for being here is to ask you to consider increasing the funding for the drama departments at our high schools. Our outstanding drama students should not have to have fundraisers to, con to have the money to construct their sets. We fund sports and athletes adequately. And it's time to respect, to recognize, and to honor our outstanding drama students and staff with an increase in the, in the budget next year. Thank you in advance for your consideration of these requests. Thank you. Thank you. Elena Blah. Good evening, members of the school board and Dr. Shandor. I'm speaking to you today in the hope- Your Name and address, please. Oh, I'm sorry. My name is Elena Blaha, 103 Shorewood Trace, Yorktown, 23693. Thank you. And I'm speaking to you today in the hope to gain your support of delaying high school start time. Personally, I have high school sons who had to be at the bus stop at 6.30 in the morning. According to the American Academy of Pediatrics, it is biologically very difficult for, ne for teenagers to fall asleep before 11 p.m. and to wake up before 8 a.m. The sleep deprivation that our children are experiencing puts them at an increased risk for obesity, depression, drowsy car crashes, and decrease in academic performance. There are already 1,000 schools that have moved their start times well after 8 a.m. In 2014, a three-year study by University of Minnesota evaluated the impact of delay school times on 9,000 students in these schools. The study concluded that there are both educational and safety benefits of later school start time. These include less tardiness, higher grade point average in morning classes, and most importantly, 
a 70% reduction rate in car crashes of teen drivers ages 16 to 18. Average start time of public schools in the United States is 7.59 a.m. That's across the country, compared to 7.20 in York County. Only 9.5% of public schools start before 9.30 a.m. And unfortunately, our kids are part of that statistic. Here in York County, we are going against our teens' natural biological clock with current early high school start times. The opponents of the later school start time cite inconvenience with sports, with buses, with some parents. When it comes to our children, shouldn't biology trump inconvenience? Thank you for your time. Thank you. <laughs> Kathleen Howe. Good evening. <clears throat> My name is Kathleen Howe, and I reside at 121 Lance Way, Yorktown, Virginia, 23693. Susan Herman wrote an article recently concerning school start times in Greenwich, Connecticut. This information that I'm going to discuss tonight will clear up any misconceptions about the impact and benefits of school start times of 8 a.m. or later. Ms. Herman stated that Greenwich High School, otherwise known as GHS, would not benefit from an 8 a.m. school start time and students would not get more sleep. <laughs> Yet the study, which Ms. Blaha just stated from the University of Minnesota in 2014, says 9,000 students were surveyed over six districts. Guess what? The students not only got more sleep with later start times, but they found that the later school started, the more sleep the students gained. When our children go to sleep, is just as important as how long they sleep. According to Dr. Judith Owens, which I stated last month from the Children's Hospital in Boston, she recently spoke at Eastern Middle School in Connecticut and stated, when teens and adults are tired, it takes them longer to get to the, answer, the correct answer of a problem. When teens are in line with their circadian rhythm pattern, they are more efficient and they retain more information easier, which is why they can get their homework done and get more sleep even with less post-dismissal school time. In fact, research suggests modifying the school start times would be less expensive than the invention schools are using to gain student improvement overall per the study of synchronizing education to adolescent biology in 2015. There are, however, significant costs to do nothing. These include doctor bills due to illnesses, injury rates will increase with sports, and mental health care, the cost of lost academic opportunities since the students are tardy and absent not to mention teaching at a time of day when they can barely retain most of the information that the teachers are presenting to them. These are just a few. Ms. Harmon, Herman rather argues that if GHS students were to benefit from an 8 a.m. start time now, they wouldn't be able to transition well to college. Guess what? Number one, most colleges do not start classes until 8 a.m., and some of those are even looking to move the start time back even further than 8 a.m. Secondly, students choose their own schedules in college, and they're not going to um, choose a five-day early with five days with early classes. Um, the money spent on significant health and achievements all, all the money that's going into why we shouldn't do it, the students would reap the rewards hand over fist. 
if we were to apply it towards that. I could go on and on. I appreciate all your time and your efforts, and I would like to know how the RFP is doing on this issue, because we have had 13 speakers prior to tonight come here, and I know the RFP is there. I do appreciate what you've done, but I just haven't heard any updates as of yet, because I do watch the work sessions. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Dr. Judy McMillan. Hello, greetings. Hi. Good Hi. evening. My name is Judy McMillan. Uh, my husband and I live at 110 Bellows Place in Yorktown, Virginia. It's the Coventry um, subdivision of TAB. Uh, this is my first school board meeting, and um, I'm honored to be here, and I'm so impressed with the York County Schools. Um, I'm here this evening in the role as a grandmother of uh, two students in, in the schools. <clears throat> They're doing exceedingly well, I'm happy to report. Um, my granddaughter is a junior, and um, my grandson is in the seventh grade at Tab Middle. So um, I spoke with my granddaughter this morning on the topic of school start times, and she wisely advised me that this is a very complex topic. So. <laughs> so, however, I'm going to keep it simple and just tell you how it looks from my perspective. I'm a retired educator of 40 years, and um, I'm, you know, my main priority right now is my grandchildren. <clears throat> so, since um, repetition is a mother of learning, I'm going to say again that research shows that early secondary school start times are not conducive to learning. The combination of changing sleep patterns in ad adolescence and early start times leaves high school classrooms filled with sleep-deprived students. My granddaughter describes this as going around feeling sleepy all the time. <clears throat> Teenagers have a different internal clock than younger children and adults. Um, that's clear. And the research also finds, as we've heard previously, that delaying high school start times can improve student grades and test scores. And while sleep deprivation is a serious health concern, <clears throat> my primary issue, why I'm speaking to you this evening, um, is with respect to the um, start times um, and its impact on safety. I worry, I'm deeply worried about my granddaughter and her classmates walking to the bus stop in the dark. They do this about half of the year. Um, are we putting them in harm's way uh, at risk of an accident or foul play in some cases? Many neighborhoods, like that of my granddaughter, grandson, and where I live in Coventry, lack sidewalks or walking paths. The students walk on the street, therefore, or on the shoulders of the road. This puts them in danger from vehicles, oncoming and passing vehicles, and uh, the streets are not well lit. In many cases, they're not lit at all in the neighborhoods. Um, and I can assure you, you do not want your children walking on the road with my night vision um, or my baby boomer eyesight, because seriously, I, you know, I drive, but I don't see well in the dark. Um, Walking on the shoulders of the road has its own obstacles, as we learned when my granddaughter, uh, in her freshman year, took a serious spill, um, fell into a hole um, on the side of the road, and badly skinned, bruised, bloodied her knees. And uh, she went on to school, uh, was treated by the <coughs> wonderful school nurse, underpaid school nurse. <laughs> <laughs> um, and she you know, carried out her, her school day. Um, without complaint, but she did not have a pleasant day. So um, I personally have purchased a whole lot of reflector tape to put on her backpack and um, um, done everything I can to, to uh, make sure that um, she and my grandson coming up will be safe. So in summary, as a guiding principle of Leadership, we're advised not to ask employees or students in this case to do anything that we would not be willing to do. And I would just ask um, if we would be willing to walk in the dark in all types of weather around 6.30 in the morning and then wait for a school bus to arrive. I would not. 
and I feel as though most everyone here would not. So thank you very much uh, in summary for uh, hearing my remarks, and I urge you to consider the many compelling arguments for going back to traditional start times. Thank you so much. Thank you. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Carolyn Harath. We've still got a few speakers to get through, so if I could just ask you to please acknowledge the, the light system, please. <clears throat> Thank you. Caroline Harris, 306 Artillery Road, Yorktown, Virginia, 23692. Thank you. Superintendent Shandor, Mr. Chairman, and members of the school board, I'm here tonight to thank you for the steps that you're taking to review the elementary attendance zone boundaries and for your dedication to providing a quality education for all of our students. I'm also here to ask that you review the attendance zones for, mil for middle and high schools. Rezoning Yorktown Crescent from Yorktown Elementary to Seaford Elementary School is a good first step to relieve a small amount of the enrollment pressure from Yorktown Elementary School while adding minimal students to Seaford. At your work session on May 9th, you discuss the next step, which is to appoint a representative advisory committee to review attendance zone boundaries. I believe that it's critical to redistribute students more equitably between schools now, and that doing so will provide a more balanced environment across the division for teachers and students alike. Dr. Shandor stated at the May work session that the number of elementary school age school students attending York County Elementary Schools during the last 10 years has increased by 400 students. It's important to also note that this growth was uneven. These students came to Tab, Bethel Manor, and Yorktown Elementary Schools, while the other seven schools saw flat or falling enrollment. Division and county staff have projected that the new housing communities will add more students, which will cause Grafton Bethel, Magruder, and Yorktown Elementary Schools to further exceed instructional capacity. Mr. Mathis, I hope that your experience on the Planning Commission will be an asset to the school division in shaping how it will accommodate the students from the new housing communities. In addition to looking at the elementary school attendance zones, I request that the advisory committee and the third party consultant look at the attendance zones of the middle and high schools as well. The bubbles of growth in students at some elementary schools will affect middle and high schools into which they feed. The school that my children have attended is Yorktown Elementary, which by division estimates is now at 115% of instructional capacity and is in need of your continued help. The teachers, administration, and staff at YES should be commended for the tremendous work that they have done to minimize the effects of overcrowding on the students. The addition of modular units for the next school year will help, but they must be open for students by the end of August so that the teachers and staff can get set up. In summary, I believe that adjusting the attendance zone boundaries is critical for the future of York County Schools, and I look forward to hearing the committees and the consultants' reports. Rezoning won't be, easy, won't be easy, but it's a logical and fair way to ensure that all students receive the best education possible and that our teachers and staff receive the support that they need. Thank you for all that you do for our students and our community, and have a great summer. Thank you. <clears throat> Natalie Hall. Uh, good evening, Dr. Shandor and Dr. George and members of the um, board. My name is Natalie Hall and I reside at 117 Runaway Lane, Yorktown, Virginia. Uh, we've been there about six years. I have two boys that have gone through Yorktown Elementary. One's getting ready to um, go into middle school. That's a scary situation for a mom who sees two boys who are actually ready for middle school. I'm not ready, really, and I've had one there for a few months. Um, <coughs> I'm here to speak to the traditional start times. Um, I wasn't aware of how important it is until my own boys started sleeping a little bit longer in the morning and needing that sleep and hearing the discussions that have been um, raised here at the board meetings. I, I would encourage you really to, to follow the traditional start times. We're, we're one of a few counties that actually get to school so early in the morning. Um, both my boys are on track for Eagle, Eagle Scout with Troop 306, and my husband um, unfortunately has promised them both uh, new cars when they do that. And uh, so my seventh grader in preparation for that you know, knows what he's going to get by that time, and he has started a computer program where he learns to drive on the roads, which scares me. 
watching him do that. And I really don't want him on the roads that early in the morning. I can picture him as a 16-year-old Eagle Scout with all the good intentions in the world, but being out on the roads that time of morning, going to school. I, by the time he gets there, I hope that this situation has resolved itself and we are right on track with all the other wise, wise, wise decisions that have been made for after 8 a.m. You know, I, I can't tell you how much I would really love for that to happen. Um, and the other thing that I would like to really encourage you um, to continue all the work that you have been doing to help alleviate the overcrowding at Yorktown Elementary. The teachers, the staff, the kids, they feel the stress. Um, this time of year, there's a lot of testing going on. Um, that microcosm is very fragile. We have a lot of fragile learners. We have some of the, you know, the most dedicated staff, but if you don't make the right decision across the boundaries of the attendance zones, we are gonna continue at Yorktown Elementary to have more and more and more problems, far reaching. I mean, um, I can't tell you how many things I've seen that can be alleviated with the students that could go to other schools be sent to other schools. Um, it's a hard decision, and I appreciate all the efforts that you all are doing in that regard, and we'll see you next year. Thank you so much. Thank you. <laughs> Laura Emery. Hello, my name is Laura Emery and I reside at 104 Little John Road, Williamsburg, Virginia, 23185. This is my first uh, attendance to a school board, so thank you for having me come here. And I know you've heard all of the arguments so far, so far on uh, traditional starting times, and I would love to just kind of add one more thing to that. Um, my daughter is in sixth grade at Queens Lake Middle School, art magnet program. She's hoping to continue in the School of the Arts at Bruton. And again, I, I agree with all of these parents and teachers and um, people, you know, expressing their uh, concern about kids starting a little too early, they need to have good sleep. And it made me realize that one of my jobs is to actually help people with their health and wellness. And I am helping people create good and healthy habits. And I realize if we get started earlier with our kids, then if we develop these better healthy habits, they're gonna continue into their adulthood. And I was going through one of my uh, colleagues, Dr. Redmond here, she says that the five things that we need to be healthy adults are a balanced diet, regular activity, supplementation, stress management, but one of the most important is maintaining a regular sleep pattern. And believe it or not, sleep is probably one of the most important activities of the day that we often most sacrifice. And those who sleep less than seven hours a night are more likely to have weight issues and other health problems. And this made me realize that a lot of the adults that I actually help with their health and wellness they also asked me to help their kids because a lot of these kids going into high school, they're getting onto energy drinks. They're hurting their health because they can't sustain even just you know their, their sleep patterns. They go to bed like 11 o'clock at night. They get up at six o'clock just to catch a bus to York, um, York County schools or the, uh, the high schools. And this is a disruption in their sleep patterns, and so they're not being productive in school. And I'm finding a lot of them using Red Bulls and these awful energy drinks that are actually hurting their health. They're turning to sodas, which is also, you know, a very bad substitute. Sugar is more addictive than cocaine in many respects. And so I'm actually teaching a lot of these kids to get off of these awful substitutes to try to get their energy levels up just so they can make it through the day. And I realized that if we were to go back to traditional start times anytime after 8 o'clock, maybe even 9 o'clock, then these kids will have a better chance at having a longer sleep pattern at night and being a little bit more active during the day. And so I think we need to give our kids that good healthy habit to get started earlier than later. And I understand there's a lot of considerations with buses and costs involved, and I'm sure that you've been looking at some of these things, but we need to start making uh, impact as soon as possible for these kids sake. My daughter's in sixth grade, so I'm hoping if I get started and get on the bandwagon with this, maybe I can make a change for her for her high school. And so I appreciate you listening. And I just wanted to let you know that we, you know, Fairfax County has just joined 70 out of 95 Virginia school districts who have now high school starting time after nine, or sorry, after 8 a.m. So there's 70 out of 95 Virginia schools. We're one of the highest and we need to get on board. Thank you. Thank you. David Forrest. Uh, 
Dr. Shander, Dr. George, members of the board. Uh, my name is David Forrest. I live at 104 Three Point Court here in Yorktown. Um, what I want to talk to you about tonight is about uh, the concerning the rezoning stuff. Uh, at the May 9th meeting, uh, you guys went through uh, went through a presentation of um, you know like looking at the instructional capacity, and I think that's an important thing to do because as I've talked to the Board of Supervisors, they've said that they've not understood uh, your presentation on capacity, and that was a confusing thing this last time around. But uh, I think this thing kind of identifies that uh, we do have shortfalls in instructional capacity at uh, several of the schools. Um, one thing that Dr. Dr. James presented was this map of um, of the county, but if you sort out those numbers for the current stuff, you see that uh, there's kind of a spatial distribution. At the north end of the county, there's 96 excess students right now that we have, 75 up in um, up in uh, Magruder, 91 down here. And if you start moving around these zones, if you move the line up to meet instructional capacity at the north end of the, at the, which one's this, Waller Mill up here? Up at Waller Mill, that'll add to here, so you have to move this line for uh, like 96 plus a 75, and for Yorktown Elementary, you'll have to move 96 to 75 and then 91, you have to move all, the, everything's all kind of like dependent on each other because our, our county is stretched out. Uh, these problems are gonna get worse as uh, the new, new stuff come, new uh, developments come online. Some of the consequences I see, I, I just see at Yorktown Elementary where my student, my kids go, um, but the overcrowding there has, uh, for this year, it's uh, we're substandard on the amount of hard surface playgrounds there. We've got one playground with uh, trailers parked on it. I think next year we're going to have the new modular building is going to be parked on top of the other playground. Uh, and we'll be short of the two hard surface playgrounds there. Parking is a problem there. Uh, people park in the muddy ditch out front. Um, one problem that we have is like the lot size there in the zoning area that we're in limits it instead of a 14 acre lot makes it a 10 and a half acre lot, and the uh, to meet the state standards there, uh, that uh, capacity of the lot size is uh, something like 678 students. There's not, uh, the lot is small for the size that we have there. There's not room for expansion, so you need to do the rezoning. <coughs> um, you guys have to make trade-offs um, in the face of limited resources and limited funding, but um, it appears that uh, the county has put you guys at the bottom end of the list. Uh, there's been $9 million of cuts this year. Uh, over the next three years, it's $26 million worth of cuts. Um, with these uh, multiple priorities and inadequate fun funding, something has to give. The county, at least this year, uh, is c cutting and deferring large amounts of the school division capital plan. Uh, the schools at the north end of the county are at the bottom end of the list for the York County <coughs> priorities. Uh, we're already over capacity, and we don't meet the sta standards now. And what priority and standards are going to end up slipping over the next few years? I hope you guys will do a better job of recognizing and communicating the trade-offs and shortfalls that, uh, that you guys are making and um, communicating them to the Board of Supervisors and to your constituents. And those are my comments. Thanks. Thank you. <clears throat> and Andrew Knapp. Good evening. Uh, my name is Andrew Knapp, and I reside at uh, 104 Gonisti Court. That's in Yorktown, Virginia. And uh, tonight, I'd like to ask the members of the board to favorably push the school start times to a later time. And uh, as I mentioned by several speakers here, there's a body evidence, scientific evidence, that the latest school start time is better for the student. My daughter, who graduated last year and who just finished her first year at the NC State, actually came and agreed with me on that topic. And so besides the scientific body evidence, I'd like to add to a few of my observations. Uh, first of all, I found a little odd that my daughter had to be at school before I had to be at work at 7.30 uh, as a military member uh, at Langley Air Force Base and subsequently as a military contractor. Um, the other thing is uh, six, you know, 6.30, five, she has to be at the bus stop and uh, the start time is, uh, is too early, and that does concern me. Uh, start time, uh, because such an early start time, it gave her very little time to have opportunity for breakfast, and breakfast is one of the more important meals of the day. 
And as mentioned a couple of speakers before, that she has to go and walk in the dark to the bus stop at 6.35. And um, uh, one additional thing is a, uh, because of her, her workload, and of course each child is different, but the school load is such that there were times that she didn't finish her uh, homework until like one or two o'clock in the morning. And among her peers, this is normal. And so, you know, you have a child here that uh, sometime finished like one or two o'clock in the morning and some day she, she uh, drove to school and I'm real concerned, you know, a tired child driving to school, 17 under construction, so get there and find a parking space bef and before the school starts at 720. And so um, because of all the reason I'm mentioning, uh, I asked uh, the board to maybe consider pushing the time back to a more traditional start time. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> <clears throat> if there's anybody else that would l like to, yes, ma'am. Dr. George, can I just ask everyone who favors a more traditional school time to please stand no. right now? Uh, we, we know you're here. We know you favor it. Okay. Most of the parents and people in this room drove Thank down to okay. Williamsburg and all the Thank you. Sports. Thank you. We appreciate, we appreciate all your input. We really do. Okay. Um, what I was going to say is if there's anybody here who did not sign up to speak and would like to do so, I'll give you a little extra time at the end of the meeting. So, Okay, matters by board members. Mr. Mathis, you're in the hot seat because we always start on that end. So uh, this is just a time to share anything or nothing. So whatever works for you. Well, a wise man said never pass up an opportunity to share nothing. <laughs> um, I do want to express uh, uh, how happy I am. I am and the gratitude and the humility I feel for uh, uh, being assigned to this position and serving you all out there. Uh, I am very keen and interested in your positions and I am much more in a receive mode than anything else so view me as a sponge and uh, I, I want to listen to your ideas and your concerns that you have and I think we can move and find a way forward on a lot of these things and just I'm happy to be here. Good. Mr. Minter. No, Medford, how many times am I going to do that? It's going to be hard. I'm sorry. Um, I really don't have any prepared remarks except that yeah. as we wind down our school year, um, we still have some time left in the classroom there, so I just encourage the students to continue staying focused um, and for the parents to keep their students <laughs> focused as they gear up for testing and, and the exams and all, everything else that kind of um, comes with the conclusion of a school year. Um, but graduation is quickly approaching. Uh, proms are taking place. After proms are taking place. A lot of activity, a lot of stuff, a lot of busy. Um, as we wind down this year, it's kind of, kind of, don't know if summer's ever going to land or not. Um, the rain seems to be coming every day. But um, for the students, I think it's important just to stay focused as you conclude your school year. Um, for the, for me, that's really just want to welcome our newest member to the board. Um, and you'll, we're always sponges up here, <laughs> always taking in information and digesting information um, and input. But um, you had your opportunity to run, I told you, you know, but, but you, swore, you, you, know, you, you, you took the oath, so now you're in it. Um, but we have, we, we will enjoy working with you and um, look forward to it. That's really all I have. Um, well, I would like to echo those comments and welcome Todd to our team. I think he'll be a valuable asset as we move forward. I also want to thank all the speakers tonight. Um, I really appreciate you taking time out of your schedules to come here and talk about the issues of concern to you and let us uh, hear from you. I think that is such a, that's the most important part of this job is to represent and listen to our constituents, the citizens in our district and the county, and I, I thank you for coming here to speak. Uh, it's been a very busy month, uh, and I've enjoyed visiting the schools and around, seeing what the students are doing as they finish the school year, taking SOL tests, AP tests, finishing projects, performing plays, attending proms, after proms, having fun at field days, and collecting money for charity. Um, there are a couple of groups that I wanted to acknowledge. I attended an event at Tab Middle School with Dr. George last week where the Builders Club celebrated um, collecting $10,000 over a five-year period to build a school in West Africa. 
I was also at a Relay for Life event with Grafton High School and Grafton Middle School students who had uh, our teachers always participate in Relay for Life in the school board office. We have a huge participation rate. But this year we had numerous student-led teams at Grafton High School, Grafton Middle, uh, Tab High School, York Middle, York High, and I really want to give those students a pat on the back because they raised thousands of dollars to fight cancer. And I think it's just really incredible to see what our students are doing as we saw the Spanish group earlier tonight. They're really, um, it's not just instruction in the classroom, they're taking it into the community, they're finding a cause, and um, it's most commendable. And with that, we've got just a few more weeks, and we're out for summer, and I know everyone is ready. <laughs> Me, I know I am. I would ask Dr. James how many days, but he's not here this evening, but it's not very many. I'd like to publicly apologize for saying Mr. Mentor again. It's very... It's upsetting to me, but you spend eight years with someone, and I look down there, and that's just what I see. And uh, so I've done it twice now. I'm going to try my best not to do that again. But uh, Mr. Mathis, uh, welcome. Uh, it's, it's very good to have you, and uh, it's nice to have the process over with, trust me. But it's uh, really good to, good to have you here, so thank you. Um, just a couple of things. We had a wonderful employee recognition banquet. We were able to recognize our our employees and staff, and uh, Dr. Shander probably could give you more detail on uh, the number of years represented uh, of employment with our division. Uh, enjoyed that. Once again, the Project Beautiful that, that Cindy was talking about is phenomenal. Uh, graduation, June 17th. Uh, we will have that on the website. We will have all the locations and the schedule for your particular school, so make sure you check that out it would be it would be bad to show up for the wrong one um, so I think with that I'm just gonna close that out and uh, move on to financial matters and mr. Medford I believe you have that this evening I have money this evening yes um, just starting from the beginning um, it's not a lot um, out of the norm here but for the month of April Four million three hundred five thousand one hundred fifty dollars um, was basically put out. Some of the significant expenditures worth mentioning this evening. Um, the first one on the list, which is DNH distributing, um, eight hundred and seventy color graphing calculators for our high school students. One hundred four thousand dollars, a little over. Um, these need to be replaced. This can be something that can um, definitely be utilized in our schools by our students, and they're they're updated and work much better than the ones that our students would were, were using or had lack of. Um, a few, about fourth item, fifth item down, uh, Schaefer Evaluation Group, this partial payment, third party evaluator. This is the DUDEA grant, um, fund is 10,500. The grant requires a third party evaluator. And so um, the money's come from the grant, but that, a lot of grants we have, some of them come with stipulations that require a third party evaluator on, on how the monies are spent, and that's just one of them. Um, our cohort group that's here this evening, if you notice, there's actually an expenditure for that. Um, it's a reimbursable expenditure by the participants to the College of William & Mary, but it's $22,275. Um, I think it's a great bang for the buck, no matter how you look at it, if we paid for it or not. Um, for what the quality that comes out of that program with William & Mary. We've had a long history working with William & Mary on different things, and I think this cohort group that was talked about and recognized this evening prepares some of our best to become administrative uh, or administrators in our buildings and such. Um, the hard, difficult thing, I think, is keeping them here. Um, once we train them, <laughs> we want to keep them. Um, so... You'll notice there's quite a few to shared services. Um, that's discussed a lot in the county, among York County and the school division. If you notice, there's actually four expenditures for shared services equaling $414,835 and some change. One's for the SRO, school resource officer, third quarter. That was about 64800 And then you got the video services, third quarter expenditure, a little over 32000 And then you have the fuel for um, our side of use that we share in that is a little over 34,000. Then further down, you see the grounds maintenance. Grounds maintenance for the fourth quarter is $283,662 to, 
take care of our lawns and and grass and all that stuff that the, the shared service with the county takes care of there. And sometimes we see the um, the overgrowth in some areas, and mm -hmm. on a, you know when it when the weather really <coughs> wrecks havoc. And then if you look at the very last of the significant expenditures, um, Mr. Shearhart talked much about this, but I want to put some figures to it, like another um, payment to Oyster Point Construction for Walla Mill additions and renovations, $450,849. Um, there's two for Mosley Architects, one for Bethel Manor Elementary, the, the 300 and 400 hallways, the a and is little, almost 106,000, and then you'll see the YES, Yorktown Elementary Schools, HVAC, A&E services for the expansion, um, almost 126,000. So um, a lot of dollars going to things that need to be done. On resolution number 16-34, there's quite a few items on here, just a couple I wanna mention. One is something that will work hand in hand, I think, as we continue to look at rezoning, looking at start times, or looking at whatever we do with, with our school buses. Um, routing software and GPS hardware is a $222,600 new system and upgrade. Um, this allows for compatibility with our transportation software and the, and the GPS tracking that goes on with the school buses. So I was told that this, this will get real specific. I mean, if a bus runs a red light, they'll know it. I mean, it's, it's or they can get back and look at it. Um, and routing for, as the county continues to grow, Route 17 <coughs> finishes, uh, neighborhoods um, keeps getting built out. This will really bring a lot of, um, I think, efficiencies in the transportation area. Further down, 57,400, parking lot and exterior lighting from Mount Vernon, that's LED, it's gonna save money. Um, you'll see that more and more going on each year at different sites. And then the last item, which is our Citrix system software support, this is the maintenance of $65,000. So with that, oh, that's not with that either, I'm almost forgetting something. Um, under our operating budget document for April, um, if you notice, we're in really good shape. Uh, we're about 90% received and 72% encumbered. So we're, we're really good in the operating budget. And the food service budget is actually doing really well too. Um, we have quite a few more dollars received than expended. expended. It's up from last year this time. So, um, and actually I've been told that if this continues um, for the remaining of the school year, which they anticipate is going to, we're actually gonna have a surplus of funds in our food service. Um, account, which since it's a self-funding entity itself, we don't put operating dollars into our food service. It has to fund itself with student lunches and stuff that whatever the money's come in is what gets spent. Um, we're not in red. We're, we're gonna come out with a yeah. positive. So that's yeah. actually a good thing. So with that, uh, Mr. <coughs> Chairman, I'll move resolution 16-34 unless there's any questions. Do I have a second? Second. Ms. Ford. Moving off, pardon me? Yes, all, all financial matters are being moved. Yes. Yeah. A motion is made by Mr. Mathis and seconded by Mrs. Kursky to approve financial matters. Mrs. Kursky? Yes. Mr. Mathis? Yes. Mr. Medford? Yes. And Dr. George? Yes, thank you. <clears throat> this time we have our consent calendar. We have nine items. One item does need to be pulled. Let me just briefly go over these. Uh, approval of personnel actions, approval of donations. Consideration of meal prices for 2016-17 school year. Approval of resolution 1628, a resolution to approve an expansion of the Seaford Elementary attendance zone. Approval, approve two overnight field trips for certain students from all four high schools. Uh, authorize the division superintendent to execute the seventh annual addendum to the facility operating agreement between the county, school board of York County, Virginia, and the Boys and Girls Club of the Virginia Peninsula. Approval of resolution 16-29, uh, resolution authorizing school board chair division superintendent and high school principals to apply for membership of the VH, the Virginia High School League for the school year 2016-17. Uh, approval of a 2015-16 annual progress report and financial statement for York River Academy. And then the final one that, needs, that would need to be pulled this evening would be approval of minutes from a work session 
on March 21st, 2016, and a regular meeting March 28th, 2016. All board members were present, but Mr. Mathis was not with, the, with us then, so we'll need to vote on that individually. So with that, I'd like to move the uh, approval of items A through H on the consent calendar. Do I have a second? Second. Any questions? Ms. Ford? A motion was made by Dr. George and seconded by Mr. Mefford to approve the consent calendar with the exception of I. Mr. Mathis? Yes. Mr. Mefford? Yes. Mrs. Kursky? Yes. And Dr. George? Yes. Thank you. This time I'd like to move the approval of minutes from a work session on March 21st, 2016 and a regular meeting on March 28th, 2016. Do I have a second? Second. Mrs. Ford? A motion is made by Dr. George and seconded by Mrs. Kursky to approve the minutes, which is a, a approval I of the consent calendar. Mr. Mefford? Yes. Mr. Mathis? Abstain. Mrs. Kursky? Yes. And Dr. George? Yes. Thank you. Under action items, we have six items this evening, and I'm going to turn to Dr. Shander to see if he'd like to share some comments about the resolution. Thank you, Dr. George, board members. I have just a few comments regarding resolution 1627 regarding the school board approving the uh, operating budget. Um, when you look at our budget, while we weren't able to meet all of our needs in this budget, we certainly have made strides in several areas. Um, just want to share a few of them this evening, such as we will be able to provide an average increase of 2% for all full-time benefit eligible staff members in the school division. And I believe this is for the fourth consecutive year, so we should be extremely proud of that. We were also able to address all of our federal mandates related to staffing all of our LEP programs and special education programs. And um, finally, we were also able to hold down our health insurance increases to 5%, and we were able to do that due to the prudent financial management of our health insurance reserve fund. So, I'm really proud of the work that our team's done throughout the budget process. Uh, it's a lengthy process that begins, um, as you know, in November and December as we work through this. Um, but I do want to take some time to acknowledge a few folks. I want to um, publicly thank uh, Mr. Jarrett for all of his work and his leadership throughout the budget process and, and that his team um, brings to help uh, work uh, with all of our staff members as well as all members of our executive leadership team. We, we implemented a new process this year with all of our directors and, and cabinet members bringing forth information and providing documentation to support a budget request, et cetera. So uh, again, that was under Mr. Jarrett's leadership. Certainly appreciate that. Um, also, all of our principals provided input and feedback into the budget. We presented a lot of information to them and brought them along through the process. Um, and finally, our school board members. Um, as school board members, they spend a great deal of time um, receiving information and providing input on a number of um, aspects of the budget. So I certainly appreciate all of their, their input, um, especially the questions that they pose to staff members throughout the process because prioritizing a budget over $131 million is a challenging and complex uh, process. So I certainly appreciate um, their work and, and thank them for their ongoing support. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Shander. Okay, I need a motion to approve resolution 16-27. Move approval. Have a second. Second. Mrs. Ford. A motion is made by Mr. Medford and seconded by Mrs. Kursky to approve resolution 16 27. Mr. Mathis? Yes. Mrs. Kursky? Yes. Mr. Medford? Yes. And Dr. George? Yes. Next item B consideration of motion to approve the FY17 plan designs for health and dental insurance and to approve the rates. Dr. Shander, would you like to comment? I don't have any additional comments okay. at this time. We okay, can. I need a motion to approve this. This motion, please. So moved. And second. Second. Mrs. Ford. A motion was made by Mrs. Korski and seconded by Mr. Mathis to approve um, the FY17 plan designs for health and dental insurance and approve the rates. Mrs. Korski? Yes. Mr. Medford? Yes. Mr. Mathis? Yes. And Dr. George? Yes. Thank you. Next is a consideration of approval of resolution number 16-30 to continue the salaries of members of the York County School Board of, of York County. Dr. Shander, do you have any comments on this? I don't have any additional comments. Okay, does anybody have any comments? Okay. Um, I need a motion to approve resolution 16-30. Move approval. Second, please. Second. Ms. Ford. A motion is made by Mr. Medford and seconded by Mrs. Kursky to approve resolution 16-30. Mr. Mathis? Yes. Mr. Medford? Yes. 
Mrs. Kursky? Yes. And Dr. George? Yes. Thank you. Next is a motion to authorize the purchase of York County DARE program supplies at a total cost to the division not to exceed $4,000. And if the cost exceeds $4,000, the DARE program will reimburse the school division of any amounts above $4,000. Dr. Shander, do you have any comments? I don't have any additional comments. Okay. I need a motion to approve. So moved. Do I have a second? Second. Any questions? Mrs. Ford? A motion is made by Mr. Mathis and seconded by Mrs. Kursky to approve the motion to authorize the purchase of DARE materials. Mrs. Kursky? Yes. Mr. Medford? Stay. Mr. Mathis? Yes. And Dr. George? Yes. Thank you. Next, approve capital projects for the school division's FY17 capital projects fund based on an appropriation of $9 million by the Board of Supervisor Supervisors in their resolution R16-48. Dr. Shander, any just a, Yes, just a few brief comments. Um, just, just a reminder to the community and to the board and the staff members, uh, Mr. Shearhart pr presented this information at our uh, last previous, our early May work session regarding all the projects, and this is specific to FY17, so I want to make sure that I clarify that as the board um, moves forward on this. Okay. Thank you. I need a motion to approve. I move approval. Second. Second. A motion is made by Mrs. Kursky and seconded by Mr. Medford to approve the capital projects. Mr. Mathis? Yes. Mr. Medford? Yes. Mrs. Kursky? Yes. And Dr. George? Yes. And the final action item is approval of the York County School Division's FY17 proposed pay plan. Dr. Shander, do you have any comments? I do not have additional comments. Okay. I need a motion to approve the proposed pay plan. I move. Do I have a second? Second. And Mrs. Ford? A motion is made by Mr. Mathis and seconded by Mrs. Kursky to approve the FY17 proposed pay plan. Mr. Medford? Yes. Mr. Mathis? Yes. Mrs. Kursky? Yes. And Dr. George? Yes. Thank you. Next, we move into policy. Under discussion, we have none. Under first reading, we have none. Under second reading, uh, we do have action on second reading. Dr. Shander, would you like to share some remarks? Just real briefly, there, there were no changes since our last, our last discussion regarding this item. Okay. All righty. I need a motion to approve the second reading of Policy K. I move approval. And do I have a second? Second. And Mrs. Ford. A motion is made by Mr. Medford and seconded by Ms. Mr. Mathis to approve the second reading of Section K. Mr. Mathis? Yes. Mr. Medford? Yes. Mrs. Kursky? Yes. And Dr. George? Yes. All right. At this time, we have the report of the superintendent. That would be you. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> Thank you, Dr. George, board members, community members. Um, just a, a few items this evening. First, I want to uh, welcome and extend my congratulations to our new school board member, uh, Mr. Todd Mathis. I look forward to our future and, and working together with you and um, spending time with members of our team to provide information to you and answer any questions that you have moving forward. So uh, welcome to the team. We're really, really excited that you're on board. A um, couple other items I wanted to share. I attended uh, several events this past month. Um, I had the opportunity to see the Lion King at Tab Middle School. Uh, and I say that with an incredible amount of pride because it was so good I went and saw it twice. Uh, I took my two boys the first night and then I uh, took my daughter and the two boys back for the second night. Those kids put on an amazing, amazing performance. Um, my hat's off to all the staff members over there. Um, it was a professional performance. Those kids are truly unbelievably talented. So um, I would encourage community members, um, whether you have kids in the, pro in the schools or if you're, if you're a grandparent, I would encourage you to come and support our kids. They do an amazing, amazing job. Um, I also attended the event with Dr. George uh, and um, Ms. Kursky uh, at the Builders Club. Uh, raising $10,000 for building a school in Sierra Leone. I, can t I can't tell you how excited I was to see um, the teacher, and her name, of course, escapes me. Shasky. Shasky? Is that right? Shasky. Laura. I can't tell you how, uh, how excited we were and how proud of, uh, we were so proud of her because her, the passion that she has for what she's doing over there with those kids is amazing. And, and um, she, you know, she was crying during how, how proud she was and during this entire event. We had uh, members from um, International Kiwanis attend this event, which was really cool. But what was really impressive is 
We had kids from Tab High School who started this program five years ago come back to the school and talk with the group from Free the Children who were located in Canada. And it was a really, really wonderful event. So there's wonderful things going on in our schools, and our, our kids are doing an amazing job, uh, as well as our staff members. Um, the last, uh, I have two more items. Uh, attended the 2016 Outstanding Youth Award uh, recognition. That is a event sponsored by the York County Board of Supervisors. Got to attend that last week. Um, and it's also sponsored by the Youth Commission. Honored four of our students. I want to read their names real quick because it was a really sp uh, special event. Emma Donatelli, Kayla Wooston, uh, Rosalind Wade, and Sarah Lewis were all recognized uh, by the Board of Supervisors and Youth Commission. It was a really, really nice event. And last but not least, the Employee Recognitions Banquet. Um, I can tell you in the last two years, we, we do everything we can to make that event as special as possible for all of our uh, teachers of the year and staff members of the year, also our 25-year people who've been with the division for 25 consecutive years, as well, of all, as, well as all our uh, retirees. Uh, Ms. Goff had to leave a little early this evening, but she and her team members and a lot of our folks in our division work really hard to put on a special event for recognition. Recognition is extremely important. Um, our staff members dedicate so much time and effort, and we all contribute to the su success of our kids that we have to make sure that we recognize them. So I'm really proud of the event, that event. Um, did want to highlight a few of the, the recipients um, who received the, uh, some of the awards that night. The superintendent's award winner was Savina Booth. And she's a paraprofessional at Grafton High School. Really proud of her. Spirit of Education Award winner was Mr. Greg Dolak, who's Associate Director of Maintenance and Facilities and Support. He does a super job um, supporting all of our schools. Cheryl Everhart, is a, she received the Paraeducator of the Year Award, and she is a paraeducator at, at um, Tab Middle School. And that's a new award that we added this year to recognize our paraeducators. Donna Frazier is a nurse at Dare Elementary School. She rece received the Support Staff Member of the Year Award. That's another new award that we added um, to the event this year. And then finally, our Teachers of the Year. Tracy Buckley, who's a, a fantastic fifth grade teacher at Mount Vernon Elementary School, was our Elementary Teacher of the Year. Lindsay Kimbrough is a special education teacher at Bruton High School. She was our di School Division High School Teacher of the Year. And finally, Elizabeth O'Brien from York Middle School. Um, she received, she's a math teacher over there, and she received the middle school teacher of the year as well as the division teacher of the year. Again, um, we recognized members who celebrated their 25th, 25 consecutive years of service with the, the division and paid tribute to our retirees who will be leaving YSD to enter the next chapter in their, in their lives. So um, that concludes the superintendent's report. Thank you. Is there anybody who wishes to address the board that did not have an opportunity to do so? If not, we are in need of a closed session. Mr. Medford, could you take us into closed session? Okay, Mr. Chair, move that the York County School Board convene in closed session pursuant to the Virginia Freedom of Information Act to discuss personnel matters under Virginia Code 2.2-3711-A1. Second. Ms. Ford. A motion is made by Mr. Medford and seconded by Mrs. Kursky the York County School convene in closed session. Mr. Mathis? Yes. Mrs. Kursky? Yes. Mr. Medford? Yes. And Dr. George? Yes. Thank you. Have a good evening. Shut this down again.